This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 321, I believe. I'm not so good with numbers. Am I counting? Is difficult. Anyway, we are back today for a classic Rock and Roll English episode where I speak to Champagne Shah. Remember her? She is making a second appearance on the podcast and what a podcast we have in store for you today. Top quality audio is back. I also have a new microphone that I'm not using right now, but I am using in the episode. I do think I talk to you about audio a bit too much, don't I? Anyway, obviously we're coming up to Christmas, so we talk about something Christmas related and we talk about Father Christmas and whether it's a good idea to tell your children the truth, which I hope everyone listening to this podcast knows. The truth is Father Christmas does not actually exist. I'm sorry if I've just broken anyone's heart with that. And there is a really great moment in this podcast where there is an outtake, which normally I would delete, but I decided to leave it in. See if you can find it. And just remember, Champagne Shah has an eight-year-old child, okay? Oh, and before we go any further, just to tell you that we are going to take a break after this because... Next Monday is Christmas Day. Is anyone going to listen to me on Christmas Day? I don't think so. So we're not doing one on Christmas Day. Then the Monday after that is New Year's Day. Again, are you going to listen to me on New Year's Day? Probably not. So I would actually see you on the 8th of January for the next episode. But if you are in the Rock and Roll English family, do not worry because over the holidays you will record a podcast with me and we will make lots of podcasts so you will have lots of podcasts to listen to over the holidays if you're not in the rock and roll english family and you would like to record a podcast with me join the rock and roll english family you can do that by stopping the podcast you are listening to and there in the description there is the link to join the rock and roll english family anyway i will talk to you all again at the end remember if you have any difficulty understanding this conversation check out my online course Jungle Listening, which will help you understand fast spoken English, the link to which is in the podcast you are listening to right now. Anyway, I will talk to you again at the end. Happy listening. Champagne Shah, how are you today? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Always fantastic, Shah, always fantastic. Even more fantastic, you are back for another pod. I got you in especially for this, for a Christmas pod, because I thought she looks like a Christmas girl. So I thought I will get you in for a Christmas pod. You okay with that? I am more than okay with that. I am wearing my Christmas jumper to uh, get into the spirit. (laughs) Are you one of those people that just wears Christmas jumpers all the time? Uh, No, it's more the um, finishing work for Christmas has put okay. me in a good mood, so the Christmas jumper went on. See, I actually don't own any Christmas <gasps> jumpers. I do have Christmas socks, though, because people buy you Christmas socks for Christmas and you can only wear them at Christmas. So I do have lots of socks, but no jumpers. No, I would wear Christmas socks all year round, um, <laughs> but I probably wouldn't show them to anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I have done that as well it, when you're obviously running low yes. on socks and then you've got like Father Christmas socks on in June. You do have to constantly think, is anyone going to see these? The worst now with kids, it's dangerous. I always go to like places with the kids now and they always say, oh, you've got to take your shoes off. And I think, well, why didn't someone tell me this before I chose my Bart Simpson socks? <laughs> I think Bart Simpson is acceptable. It's when they've got more holes than cotton. You need to worry. Also true. Also true. Um, So anyway, Shah, it's been a while since the last time you came on. But do you remember how we start the show? I believe so. Have there been any reviews? (laughs) Reviews. Yes. What do you think? Any reviews? I think so. 
unfortunately no this oh, time no. okay which is <laughs> which is a real shame for a christmas pod we want high spirits but yeah. unfortunately no reviews so this is everyone's christmas homework to leave a review and if you're someone like me that thinks someone else will do it as we've just seen other people don't do it so i am talking <laughs> to you who thinks everyone else is going to do it um so on to the pod i have actually let the cat out of the bag and told you what we're talking about christmas but not specifically okay so i thought we could focus on a specific point of christmas which is the main man himself father christmas okay santa whatever you want to call him saint nick that's the one saint nick yeah (laughs) nicky boy um and because i've I've seen a lot of Santa, obviously, with children now in the last few weeks. And I've started having my doubts about, number one, is he a good guy? And number two, is it right to tell (laughs) kids that he exists? Okay, so we're going to explore both. We're going to explore both of these things. So the first question being, is he a good guy? And so I, I also Googled this. I did my five minutes research and it does seem he is a bit strange father christmas if we listen to the song the classic santa claus song i've got the words here you better watch out you better not cry better not pout i'm telling you why santa claus is coming to town now there are a few things wrong with that so first of all for vocabulary pout in fact you can try and explain some vocabulary for us shah what what does pout mean um pout is a specific facial expression with your lips where you sort of push them out a little very popular in certain age bracket selfies (laughs) that is exactly what i was thinking (laughs) generally sort of teenage girls taking a picture of themselves next to a door in the bathroom before in the bathroom yes always in the bathroom but but there we have father christmas telling us not to pout and the first bit you better watch out you're thinking "Mm, why Mm. you better not cry i mean 2023 we want to express our emotions don't we don't don't tell me to (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't quite fit with our um understanding of mental health anymore does it no exactly that's a big thing now mental health talk to someone but santa's telling you not to do that so that's my that's my first gripe let's say Then we have, later on in the song, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. So watching you when you're sleeping. mm. Mm -hmm. A bit creepy, that one. (laughs) Very creepy. And it just says he knows when you're awake. I'm not sure if he's watching me when I'm awake because... (laughs) Again, that would be like when I'm in the shower. Does that mean he's watching? I'm not sure. He's always watching. There are definitely some doubts. He always wants people to sit on his lap, doesn't he? So sit on your lap, like sit on your knees, which when you Mm. think about it, I actually took so um, the R&R babies to see Santa recently and the older one, toddler R&R. When Santa said, come and sit on my lap, she very much told him where to go (laughs) good on her good on her i didn't think they were allowed to let children sit on their laps anymore oh really i didn't know well well maybe this specific santa then i I should have reported him (laughs) she's got a very good understanding of people already (laughs) she knows who to avoid yeah wow no I, i i didn't know that okay that that makes it a bit better but yeah he obviously breaks into people's houses at work as well during the night so Okay, so I've, I've definitely got my doubts about Santa, okay? But the, the big question, should we tell kids about Santa, okay? Now, for example, so I, I put yes and no so we can debate this, okay? Yes okay. and no. Well, first of all, tell me your feelings about this. Um, well, making sure the door's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, my little boy's not quite sure, so I haven't said yes and I haven't said no keep him guessing i like it yes so he wants to set a trap actually okay what well, wants to kill him like, yes. like the film home alone <laughs> yes. um he wants to put something near um the chimney so that if it's moved he'll know whether there's been someone around or not um, right. and if it's still in the same place then no one will have come down the chimney right okay well the big question is then are you going to move it during the night 
I haven't decided. Oh, wow. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next one. We'll leave him on a cliffhanger. The episode finishes there. That's the end. Um, <laughs> He's, uh, wow. He also doesn't want to write a letter this year and doesn't want to visit Santa this year, but would still quite like a present. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a classic, isn't it? So it's kind of like kids when with like their grandparents. Yeah, I can't be bothered to go and see them. But yeah, definitely still want still want a present, of course. Um, well, that's interesting because in our pre-podcast chat, we were talking and I said how your son is the same age as my niece. And my brother was telling me recently that my niece said to her, said to him, like, well, the good thing is we can just get whatever we want because it's free because Father Christmas buys <laughs> buys it anyway and my brother was like uh mm, yeah but so she was like yeah well like five ipads and maybe three. <laughs> uh, mm, I, th- I think there is a limit i think there is a yeah. limit i've always um because i've always worked in education with children i'm not gonna say i've always worked with children that sounds a little <laughs> bit dodgy you sound like you sound job. like father christmas's best mate yeah. now getting people to come and sit yeah. on your lap Me and Santa, yeah. <laughs> um, I've always said um it's just a small gift because you see so many children coming in with playstations and then some with like a hairband and it seems so unfair that it's always exactly. just been the small gift um, and the big one comes from mummy and daddy yeah I, I I think that is a good idea for that exact reason because yeah, if one kid gets a PlayStation and like you said, one kid kid gets a hairband. It's like, mm, Santa likes me, but he doesn't like you. Um, yeah. So some of the reasons I, so I've got on my list here. So for yes, was holiday spirit. So you yes. you mentioned this as well, and so obviously my children are younger, but. Toddler R and R now is obviously getting towards that age, so she obviously believes in Father Christmas, all that. And I think, like most people, because I'm too lazy to go to the shops, I buy most things from Amazon this year. Um, so I was thinking about the real Christmas spirit when, because Amazon drivers or whatever they're called, deliverers, I'm not sure of the official name, they now just leave stuff outside. And so I checked my phone and I realised I had a message from like three hours ago saying oh the parcels have been delivered so i went downstairs these parcels have been outside for three hours Mm. anyone could have stolen them but that's another story i pick them up and i think oh what's that oh yep no that's cat shit on them that is now all (laughs) over my hand oh no (laughs) i was going to say you're lucky they're still there but actually i take that back (laughs) mm, yeah i would have preferred someone to nick them someone to steal them than have cat shit all over my hand and yeah then you'd get you're washing the cat shit off your hands thinking this really is christmas isn't it this is ordering (laughs) something from amazon picking it up from outside your door and it's got cat shit all over it um that is disgusting mm. and as long as it didn't get into the present no luckily the the packaging was able to (laughs) to stop that but i was then obviously thinking about this cat shit on my fingers the whole time um even though i washed and washed and washed my hands non-stop and then i was actually doing lessons and then i noticed during the lesson i noticed when i think i was getting some strange looks that i was constantly sniffing my fingers going (laughs) (laughs) they must have been thinking what the hell is he doing Because you don't ever get rid of the smell, do you? It doesn't matter how much you wash, you're just no. conscious of that smell. Exactly. So oh. the whole for the rest of the day I was just constantly sniffing my fingers. But um, Oh did you explain or are they all just thinking you're a bit weird now? And I think I just think they're thinking I was a bit weird, yeah. Um but never mind. Yep. Might be why you haven't had any reviews, Mark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A one star review. He keeps sniffing his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but now now everybody knows the real reason. So just in case anyone was there. So on the no side is the disappointment. So this this is my question. OK. At what point. So, for example, with your son, can you just sit down and say, you know, for the last sort of eight, nine years, 
we've been telling you about this guy who brings you presents. He actually doesn't. <laughs> like that, that must be <laughs> devastating for a child. I don't know because they've already had the presents. So you, you're saying they're on a high about the presents anyway? Yeah, well, I think they probably don't really care how they got there in the end. Yeah, I suppose that that is a good point as long as, long as they've got something. But I, like all of this magic that you've created, if mm. they really believe in it, like all of, like this Christmas magic and then bang, it's gone. Um, it, it actually reminds me when I was young, we were getting a new car. And I remember my mum and dad said, we're getting a new car. For some reason, they told me we were getting the Batmobile. So Batman's oh, no. car. <laughs> So I must have been about four max and I was buzzing. I was thinking, honestly, when my mum and dad take me to school in the Batmobile, I am going to be the fucking coolest kid in town. And then we got like a Ford Escort. Oh, no. <laughs> and and I was absolutely devastated. And I remember saying, like, well, where's the Batmobile? And they said they didn't have it. So we've got a Ford Escort. And I was. Oh, come on. <laughs> I was devastated, but thinking back, obviously they were lying to me. But at the time, I thought we were going to have a Batmobile, um, and it's 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 crushing. So should should we do this to our kids? Is is the question? It does seem really sad. But at the same time, I also read this on a website. I was looking at forums of parents talking. Should you tell them? Like, should you not? And Someone wrote, when I was two years old, my parents told me that Santa Claus didn't exist. And so you think, oh, blimey, like two, that is, a, that is a bit young. And then she continued, most people I tell this to let out a long sighing, ah, oh, as if I just told them that my dog has died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two is a bit young because... Mm. Two, yeah, two is a bit young because they hardly really know who Santa is by two. Yeah, exactly. It's just being crushed before you've even <laughs> begun. Well, I can see benefits to that of just crush them early and then so they expect disappointment forever. When, um, when my little boy lost his first tooth, I made a beautiful letter, covered it in glitter, mm. signed it from the tooth fairy crept in, put it under his pillow. And the next morning, he stormed into my room with it and said, you did this. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I did. <laughs> I don't need wow. to worry about trying to get <laughs> exactly. pound That's under tooth... your pillow from now the... on. You had one. <laughs> <laughs> the tooth fairy dead immediately. <laughs> um... Not a chance. So, I mean, it's the same kind of thing, I suppose, just with the Tooth Fairy. The Tooth Fairy doesn't, it's not quite as famous as Father Christmas, is no. she? It doesn't quite get the same. I think because the Tooth Fairy only leaves, the general rule is a pound, isn't it, under your pillow? Yes. I, I was just thinking because yes. that was that was the rule when we were kids. I was just wondering with like inflation, has it gone up to like 10 pounds under the pillow? Oh, no, it's still only a pound. Right. Okay. Well, that's reasonable. Yeah, again, a bit of a bizarre creature. Yeah. I'm not sure I like the idea of a fairy living in a castle of teeth. <laughs> yeah. And also, like money, I always just find disgusting. Like, not as disgusting as cat shit, obviously, but <laughs> putting pound coin in a bed, thinking about it now. I, obviously, I haven't thought about the tooth fairy in quite a while. Um, but thinking about it now is actually quite disgusting. Um, but so let's continue with our lifts. Um, so on the yes, it's apparently some people say it teaches generosity, which again, I'm thinking, does it? Because certainly like my niece, if kids think it's just free and they can just get whatever they want anyway, is that really generosity? And also... So in England, I've definitely noticed the difference between England and Italy. People are much more crazy for Christmas here. You have to get a present for everyone. And what I find certainly takes away from the magic of Christmas is 
speaking to like your dad and saying, like, what do you want? He sends you a link from Amazon. You order it. I send him a link. He orders it. <laughs> Is that generosity? Is that magic? I'm not sure. No, just keep your own, buy yourself your own item. Don't exactly with the that. Hassle. Save on wrapping paper. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that. Because then on the no side here, um, it says reduce stress, which, my God, in England, the stress of Christmas is just ridiculous. So um, obviously toddler R&R goes to preschool now. And we noticed every day she was coming home with a new Christmas card. So we thought, all oh, right, we, we're going to have to do these. So they sent an email and it's got all the children's names on. There are like more than 30 kids. So you have to write out fucking 30 Christmas cards to people you don't know. And it's not toddler R&R writing it either, is it? Is <laughs> no, you exactly. and Mrs. R&R. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's an absolute nightmare. Plus, there's this new thing in England, which I, I didn't know about. This elf, the elf guy. Oh, no. No, where, the where, elf... No. When did the elf come onto the scene? So for people that don't know, elf, like obviously one of Santa's little helpers, but they do this thing now where the elf has to do something during the night. So every day you come downstairs and the elf has done something and the kids say, oh, what's he done now? But you're constantly having to try and think of new ideas of what this stupid little elf is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. off, you stupid elf. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's meant to be naughty things, isn't it? Which completely goes against the helpful elves that of getting Christmas ready. It's, exactly. No, it's ridiculous. I haven't got the patience or the imagination to do right. that throughout you, December. Okay, that, that's, that's a good option, I think. I didn't even know about the elf until this year. And then Mrs. R&R &R heard about the elf. <laughs> And oh, she no. she thought it was going to be a good idea. She was like, oh, it's going to be so magical. The, the kids are going to come downstairs every morning. Yeah, 1st of December, 2nd, 3rd. Now we're recording this on the 15th and she's already like, fucking hell, this stupid <laughs> elf. <laughs> we're not doing this again. The kids are young enough. Hopefully they won't remember. <laughs> Has she forgotten to do it yet and had to wake up in the middle of the night and run downstairs and set something up? Um, no, but there has been... Not in the middle of the night, but yeah, she has forgotten to do it and said, like, keep the kids upstairs whilst I go and do something with the elf in the morning. So it's just <laughs> Maybe another put thing. Maybe it in to... the bin. Yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> another thing to add to the list, isn't it? Just of... mm. you've got the presents, the cards, and now I've got to think about this stupid elf as well. It's, yeah. it's just too, there's too much going on. Um, so another reason apparently to not tell kids. Uh, well, to tell them that Father Christmas doesn't exist is to focus on the true meaning and spending time with family. What do you think about that? Um, I'm not sure how not having Santa would give you more time with your family. <laughs> well, I think it's so that when they look forward to Christmas, they're not thinking about Santa. They're thinking, oh, I'll be able to spend the day with right, my mum and dad and Ah, uh, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. Mm. Um, I think you need a balance, don't you? Because, um, yes, you want children to spend time with you, but let's be honest, especially as they get older, <laughs> this is going to be less and less likely. <laughs> that is exactly it. So I've got a f some pre-prepared notes here. And that is exactly what I have got on my notes. So how when I was a kid... I had zero interest in spending time with my family. I wanted to play Super Mario Brothers on the Super oh, Nintendo. Yes. I was not interested <laughs> in having a chat with my family at Christmas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we are going to stop the conversation there and take that into the members area. So for Rock and Roll English family members, you will hear the end of that conversation and some personal stories which are not safe for the public very common around christmas time to share these kinds of stories so if you want to become a member of the rock and roll english family where there are more than 1000 extra episodes weekly online lessons where you get to build a personal relationship with me and lots of amazing people around the world again 
stop this podcast, click the link that says join Rock and Roll English Family and have a look at what it is. So let's have a quick look at the vocabulary from today. So we spoke about getting into the Christmas spirit, quite an easy term to understand, but just a nice term to remember to get into the Christmas spirit. Champagne Shah said that she would wear Christmas socks all year round. I'm not sure why we say round there, but it basically means all year. And I mentioned how I do wear Christmas socks when I'm running low on socks. When you are running low on something, it means you don't really have many of them left. It means my socks are all being washed and I've only got the Christmas ones left. I also mentioned how I let the cat out of the bag and accidentally told Champagne Shah what we would be talking about because normally I like to leave it as a surprise. So when you let the cat out of the bag, then you reveal the surprise, let's say. We had the word pout from the Santa Claus song. So remember to pout. It's like you're making a kissing action and it's like we mentioned what teenage girls do when they take a selfie of themselves. I mentioned how my first gripe about Christmas, the first gripe, the first thing that really annoys me. We had sit on your lap, which is when someone sits on your legs, let's say, which, as we found out, apparently Santa is not allowed to do that, even though I do have a picture of my child sitting on Santa's lap, the younger one. But I mentioned how the older one told him where to go. It basically means you tell him to F off. But my daughter didn't say that luckily and then champagne char said good on her like well done then speaking about the amazon delivery that had cat poo on it i said in the end yes it would have been better for someone to nick them to nick them to nick them to nick means to steal in slang let's say i also mentioned when i thought i was getting the batmobile the batman car for christmas i was buzzing so i was extremely happy but i mentioned then obviously we didn't and it was crushing i was so disappointed champagne char then mentioned the first time her son lost a tooth she went in and actually crept in so to creep in the past crept in so you come in really quietly so that Obviously, your child doesn't wake up, so then you can put the money from the tooth fairy under the pillow. And then she said, he stormed into my room. So when you storm into a room, you're very angry and you say, look, what's going on here? You did this, not the tooth fairy. And I mentioned how one pound is actually quite reasonable. It's not too expensive, like Christmas, which is really expensive. One pound a tooth is pretty reasonable I think then we spoke about the elf and I said when did he come onto the scene so when did he become a thing basically anyway that is all for today's podcast I will see you actually in the new year now because we're going to take a very short break because I don't really know how many people to listen to podcasts during the holidays I probably will make a podcast or two but for rock and roll English family members there will be lots of podcasts to listen to over the holiday so thanks a lot for listening everyone have a good christmas new year happy holidays whatever you're supposed to say i will see you in the new year where we will continue rocking so thanks again for listening see you all soon but in the meantime just keep on rocking baby thanks so much for listening to rock and roll english for more great content and to stay up to date visit rock and roll english.com and facebook.com slash rock and roll english we'll catch you next time